He'd begin with a partial solution, we think, to the chaos and congestion of Auckland roads and the still underwhelming level of public transport in this city. It's called Slimride. It's a light rail system, similar to the one that some of you will have travelled on in London's Docklands. And what's great about it in parts of the city where there's simply no more space for transport options is that it requires very little room. In a moment, we'll meet the former BMW motorbike engineer who designed it. But first, briefly, here it is. These little electric rail cars have more in common with roller coasters than with trains. They promise to be silent, swift and frequent. A low-tech cure for Auckland's traffic congestion. The track would be slim, sometimes on the ground and sometimes running above the ground at about fence height. They can go up to 100 kilometres an hour and would travel in loops around inner Auckland, as far east as Mission Bay and as far north as Albany. And they could be used as a form of last mile transport, carrying people that final distance to busy places like malls and universities. They can carry up to 15 people standing and there's room for wheelchairs. The first step is to raise $100,000 to build a prototype. So that's Kim Haring with a brief introduction to Slimride. The man who designed it is Oliver Neuland from Mass University's Auckland School of Design, and he's with us in the studio now. Oliver, welcome. Hello. Hello. It seems to me there's two problems with public transport in, in, in Auckland, and that is, one, that nobody's using it, and two, that there's no room for any more, oddly yeah. enough. So how does this solve those problems? Um, when I came here uh, three years ago, I observed... Uh, how the public, public transport system uh, works or not works. Uh, and I saw that, yeah, there's not a lot of space. Um, and people, you, there are only buses and people don't use them much. They're, they're very often empty. Yeah. I mean, they, there's yeah. entire lanes, particularly going across to the North Shore, devoted yeah. to them, but the buses are often empty. Yeah. Only a few people sit in there. Yeah, so yeah. I wondered how could that be solved or, or how could you um, address this? And I thought uh, the first step would be to make something narrow so that the footprint is much narrower than it is now to use less um, uh, space in the city. And the other thing is to have smaller units which can transport people um, when they when they needed. So in the peak times you run a lot more of this unit. So, so you almost join them together as carriages, yes. like, like a conventional train. Yeah. So then you have a chain of, of trains and then uh, cabins and they just run along um, a track. Uh, and in off-peak times when only a few people uh, travel, then you would have only um, individual cabins which then would run up and down. Okay, track. so you don't have a situation where people are waiting around half an hour no. but because they're constantly coming through. Yeah. But they're, so they're, they're coming through all the time but only in the numbers that are required. Yeah. So, so I uh, hope that in, in each, um, at each station you have a, have a, uh, a button where you even can, can order this, this cabin. So and it comes out of a depot nearby. Yeah. Okay. It runs on electricity? Yes. And given that Auckland tends to have a tendency to, toward power cuts, what happens if the, does the whole system crash if the electricity um, stops working? No. Uh, in, the, in the lower uh, um, part of, the, of this uh, um, tra uh, train there would be um, a battery pack, which it carries underneath the floor. So... Um, and that would make it autonomous from the from the grid. So it would only uh, load um, uh, load the battery and uh, in the track, and, and certain parts don't have to be electrified. So it could be uh, it's an on-off grid system. Okay. Okay. Does it have the capacity to carry tens of thousands of people a day? Um, it. I see it as, as a part of a network, and I think um, it could carry quite a lot of people if, if you have these chains of, of, of cabins running along and having much faster turnover. So so not. Keeping people waiting for a long time. Yes, you, you, you move more people at the time when they require it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, also, it, it but it should interlink with other systems, so with big trains and maybe some, some other systems. Well, 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 one thing, in terms of pedestrians, because it's not driven by anyone, yeah. it's automated. So if somebody gormlessly steps out in front of one of them, what's the safety aspect? How do you control it when it's on the ground level? Yeah, so ground level in the inner city, um, there would be sensors which could detect um, um, if someone crosses this. The same as a reverse sensor yes. on a car or something. For example, in, in some cars you have 
this detectors which tell you how far you away from a, from an object, and they start to beep 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 yeah, and do this. Absolutely. And um, there, and the other uh, component would be if it's very heavy uh, um, um, foot traffic and so on, then I would use um, uh, pilots in a in a in a in a control room where they just take over and pilot them through the busy areas and then release them open to the to the track again. So, so we've got to go on. We're out of time. But expensive, or do you think this can be done relatively cheaply? I think it can be done very cheaply, much cheaper than than other systems and I talked to some people who told me yeah mud could be much cheaper even than buses. Oliver Neuland from Mass University's Auckland School of Design. We really like the look of it. We'd love your feedback. Thanks Oliver. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. We'd love to hear what you guys think of it.